Hey everyone, and welcome to WDIM Plus, where today I'll be discussing the eighth episode of the Dexter New Blood miniseries titled Unfair Game. The Hunters became the hunted in this really fast-paced episode, as not only is Harrison put in a familiar and dangerous position by a new friend, but also we see someone close to Dexter get closer and closer to finding out the truth about him as well. With only two episodes to go, this series has certainly had its share of ups and downs, but seems to be paying off on a lot of fan theories while also creating plenty of twists and turns as we get closer to the finale. I will go over everything that happened in this episode, as well as some of my theories on how they connect to Dexter's history, but first I want to thank you for clicking on this video and remind you that if you do enjoy the content, to please hit that like button. Doing that and subscribing to my channel helps tell YouTube to push my videos out to more people and helps my channel grow. The episode begins with Dexter in Elric Kane's back seat after he was jumped by Kane at the end of the last episode. Kurt obviously put some sort of plan in motion after Dexter foiled his plans to kill Molly Park, and we see it play out throughout this episode. We also witness a dream in which Dexter sees Harrison kill two of the teenagers that attacked him at the truck stop. Dexter is feeling a ton of guilt over his son at this point, and it is probably what ends up saving him from this precarious position. Kurt calls Kane, and from the call, Dexter learns that Kurt has something planned for Harrison as well. He is able to garrot his plastic cuffs through Kane's mouth, which causes him to crash his truck. This allows for Dexter to escape and he cuts himself free with the same titanium pin that Kurt gave him that had belonged to Matt. Matt was obviously a problem for Kurt and it is ironic that even in death, Matt is still messing up Kurt's plans as a pin taken from his smoldering corpse helps Dexter escape. Kane is a hunter as well and starts shooting Dexter as he runs away, hitting him once in the leg. At the police station, Angela has a discussion with Logan and he reveals that he found Jim, aka Dexter, at a bar attacking the person that sold Harrison drugs. Angela is very surprised by this and decides to go to the bar and look for the drug dealer that was attacked. She gets him to admit that Jim only attacked him after the cops arrived and just before they did, Dexter had stuck him in the neck with something. Dexter has been much sloppier this season and if you remember after he killed Matt he realized that he left a blood trail that he was able to clean up just before Angela and the police were at his house. Now that Angela is starting to put these pieces together, there is no doubt that his carelessness is what will lead her right to him. Kurt takes Harrison to the high school, which he still has access to, and they enter while no one else is there, under the guise of hitting baseballs in the batting cage. This series seems to try to make a point that the most successful serial killers hide in plain sight, and it is obvious that Kurt has his run of the entire town of Iron Lake. Later on in this episode, we see that Kurt is doing all of this as part of his ritual, which is now evolving, and this act is a way for him to replace the father-son playing catch trope that he knows Harrison never had and wants badly. But of course, since Kurt is a sadistic person, this is a more violent version of the activity and leads to Harrison hurting himself. Harrison not only wants to show Kurt that he is tough enough, especially after hearing that Kurt's own son Matt was a standout baseball player, but Harrison is also punishing himself for not only his violent behavior but also his feelings. It is really sad to see a 15 year old kid feel this way and makes Kurt a much eviler character that he would exploit these feelings like this. It almost feels like Kurt's ritual is similar to the practice of telling children that you are taking their sick dog out to the farm, which is a euphemism that parents use when they have to put a dog to sleep due to old age or illness. Usually this involves doing everything the dog likes to do and giving them a great day before you have to end their life. It seems like Kurt is trying to give Harrison one great day with a father figure before he takes him out to his cabin and has to put him down. By taking Harrison to the batting cages, cooking him a home cooked meal and giving him a drink, Kurt is basically fulfilling his runaway ritual, but in a manner specific to hurt Harrison and Dexter. In the woods, Dexter is still struggling to elude his hunter and tries to lose him by a creek, which Kane is able to brush off. Eventually, Dexter comes upon a local camp and says that a summer camp is the perfect place for a serial killer to make a stand. This is a reference to one of the most famous serial killers on screen, Jason Voorhees, and all of his adventures at Camp Crystal Lake in the Friday the 13th movies. Dexter also makes a comment about the night being his after Kane threatens Dexter that he had all day to hunt him. This is a reference to the many times that Dexter hunted for his prey, in Miami and otherwise, and the first sentence we hear Dexter say in the original series is tonight's the night. Dexter is able to get the upper hand on Kane after jumping through a mirror and kills him with a knife. Before dying, Kane reveals that he was paid to take Dexter to Kurt's cabin where his son Harrison is now. Dexter takes Kane's clothes but leaves the scene with the knife still in his chest. This is another example of Dexter being sloppy and hopefully he's able to clean this up before Angela catches up with him, as Angela is still searching for answers about Dexter and learns from Logan that the guy who made the drugs that Harrison overdosed on, overdosed himself on his own product. Given the timeline with when Dexter was detained, she puts together that he could be involved and goes to the coroner. There she finds that the deceased had ketamine in his system along with fentanyl, 
which the police did not think to look into since the person was a known drug user. But Angela recognizes a pattern and searches the internet to find a link. There she sees that the victims of the Bay Harbor Butcher also had traces of the drug in their system. Dexter races to Kurt's cabin with Deborah egging him on. Knowing full well that Dexter has been kidnapped, Kurt picks up Harrison and takes him back to the same cabin we have seen that is the start of the killing ritual that Kurt completes with runaways. After Dexter found it, however, Kurt completely cleaned out the kill room downstairs but looks to have left the upstairs as it was. At the cabin, Kurt continues to make Harrison try to feel comfortable and feeds him whiskey and venison. Dexter tries to text Harrison frantically to warn him, but at first Harrison ignores the text. Kurt continues to break down Harrison's walls, which is not easy to do, and pries him for information about his relationship with his father Dexter. Harrison mentions that he feels like whatever blood bond that is supposed to exist between father and son is not there for him and Dexter. While this may be true, Dexter and Harrison do have a bond born in blood that very few others could understand as they were both witness to the murder of their mothers. Suddenly, Kurt looks at his watch and says that he has to take care of something and that he will be right back. He returns in his white camouflage outfit and threatens Harrison, who is distraught and believes that he did something wrong. Kurt tells Harrison to run and intends to shoot him in the back, just as Dexter arrives and stops him. After his gun is destroyed, Kurt runs away while Dexter goes to check on Harrison. They notice that Kurt has run off and get in Kane's truck and leave. In the truck, Dexter tells Harrison that he is just like him and that Harrison does not have to feel like he is alone. Dexter reveals that his mother was killed as well and that he had the same violent urges that Harrison has while growing up. Dexter also says that it was his father that taught him a code and that he will teach it to Harrison as they embrace. The code is something that kept Dexter from becoming unhinged like the other serial killers that he has had to put down and teaching it to Harrison will be Dexter giving Harrison the father that he has always wanted while also giving more credence to the way that Dexter was raised. I'm sure Deb will not be happy about this development and I know many fans wish that this scene would have happened earlier in the season but I thought that the end of the episode was one of the most heartfelt moments in the history of the character. With two episodes to go, now we will see Dexter and Harrison working together to find Kurt, while Angela tries to understand who Dexter really is. It looks to be an exciting end to the series, so let me know in the comments what you think will happen. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please hit that like button if you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?